Okay. So here I've got like a little hallway, some torches. Um, we weren't supposed to necessarily use like the fire element stuff, particle effect, but it was in with the starter stuff, starter content. So uh, I have it available. Now i have still be adding directional lights because they don't cast shadows and the directional lights will. Uh, the point lights, I'll add that somewhere too. Uh, anyways, so right now we're going to work with a trigger box. So here's a trigger box that's kind of already set up. Uh, this is kind of what I needed to do to set this up. Got public variable uh, array of objects called torches. And I'm going to show you how to quickly set that up that you can move on to your own. The other thing is, is I'm using just the base um, single torch that I made here. It's just a cylinder with this little key fire effect. If you just go to like fire, actually get the P fire in here. I went into uh, starter material and dragged and dropped the fire into here and it, it worked. So that's how I got that. Anyways, um, so, so the first thing we're going to do, I guess, is move this box out of here. We'll deal with that later. So you're going to want to make a trigger volume. So just type in trigger. And you're actually not going to hold on, hold off on that. You're going to want to go over here and do blueprint class. And then here you type in trigger. Now you can have a custom trigger object. A trigger box. And you can call this a uh, torch trigger or something, or light trigger, depending on the kind of light too. Um, torches trigger or torches, because we already have one called torch trigger. So you're going to drag that here, uh, move it into whatever position you want, uh, because we don't know how the player is going to come up. We're going to want to increase the size. So uh, we have a tool for that. It's over here. So I'll just drag that over there. Maybe up a bit. Okay. They have to walk through that pretty much. So now that we've done that, we've basically set everything up. Set up. Now we go in to edit the trigger for torches. Uh, we don't need any more models in here. So we're just going to hop over to the event graph and start a variable. So we go into variable here and we're going to just give this a, uh, you know, a descriptive name. We're going to call it torches. Uh, and then the variable type, it's going to be an object and it's going to be the t of type torches. Um, since that's what I called my model or my light. Uh, so it's going to be called wall torch. So then we want it to be an array. So this is a single object and we want to make an array. So click this little bar, drop down to array, and now it's an array. The next thing we want to do is make it visible. So we have a little eyeball over here. If we click it, it's now public. And with that, once we hit compile, uh, we have a default value. So we could add it probably here too. And we're going to need eight. So let me make seven of these up to seven. And now if I hit compile again, you could do this. They will show up here under default. And you could add them here or in here. It doesn't really matter. You can't add stuff to it, the array, unless you're in your main editor here. So if we hit the drop down here, uh, I've grouped these torches. So because um, I made this as a single torch or a single light, I didn't make a custom blueprint class for each torch and like instance it. Um, we're going to just grab it by its variable name. So in the world outliner, when we select the class, uh, select the torch it highlights one of them or the group if you grouped them so we need 7 8 9 10 and then we're going to need 11 to 14. so over back in this trigger box if we go to the default area where we've made that visible we're going to select 7 to 14 in this box 7 8 9 doesn't really have to be in order but whatever whatever works uh, 11 12 13 12 13 and 14 okay so this is basically all the setup for controlling all of your objects 
by a trigger. And you can do this for pretty much every, anything. So, because uh, this is the public uh, variable method. Uh, you could do it with it, easier ways with uh, interfaces and stuff. Um, and I'll go over that some other way, some other time. So we're going to edit this box. And we've got the three default things here. And we're actually going to use two of them. So to begin with, since these torches here are the same as all the other ones I've used, but we only want to control these ones, we're going to have to set up like something for it to turn off at when the game starts. So it's like constructor of sorts. So begin play starts right when the game starts. So the first thing we need to do is grab this torches and do get. Get torches. And from there, we need to loop through the array. So we need to for loop for each loop. And then from there, we know the torch has P fire, or if you had a light in here, it has a light too. So we're going to go and search for that. So in my case, they're called P fire. So I will do P fire. So get P fire. And then from there, I'm going to set visibility. And we're going to set that to off. And we're going to link this up to begin play. That way, each one of the ones that I have here will start turned off. So that when the character walks through the, the trigger, they all turn on. So connect all those together. And let's see for comment. Um, starts game with port off. OK, so now the next thing is when an actor overlaps the trigger box, what are we going to do? So we've already got our torches here. Um, so we could just grab that, grab this, and grab P fire. And, well, actually, we could just grab everything, so it's going to be the same thing. And the only other thing is we're just setting the visibility. So oh, sorry, this has got to be off, and this has got to be on. So check mark. So off, false, and true. And then compile and play. So as we walk through here, all these lights are on. That's great. But the ones in the room are off. So as soon as I walk through that trigger, they turn on. And then if I create another one, the next set will turn on, and the next set will turn on as we go forwards. Uh, these lights do not cast uh, shadows, as you can kind of tell. Um, so we're going to add some directional lighting because that's really good for shadows. Okay, so this is the, the trigger.